Hello and welcome to the Sports Express Community Sports Report. I'm here with Scott Wilson, the defensive coordinator of the Auburn Pride. On this week's episode, we're going to talk some Auburn Pride football and we're also interviewing TJ Gamba, the coach of the Cayuga Spartans, talking about his role starting a baseball program here in Auburn at Cayuga Community College and also about his journey along the way. Very fascinating story, Auburn guy. Goes to Ithaca College, plays a couple of years of professional baseball, and uh, right now it's all about giving back to the Auburn community. From Pop Warner to the Dome, from 5Ks to marathons, from Little League to Work Leagues, focusing on the community sports lifestyle in Central New York. Oh, do it. Do it, do it. Go on and do it. So, Coach. Let's start with the the Auburn Pride. Another heartbreaker. Ah, uh, I <clears throat> I don't know what to what to think. Every week I drive home and my mind's going 100 miles an hour, thinking of 20 different things that could have tipped the scale in our favor. You know, we're we're one play, two plays away from winning every week, and uh, we got to find a way to get over that hump. We we could. Be as easily three and zero as we are zero and three. Oh, with, with, without a doubt. So this week's game against the Broome County Stallions, you guys handled them pretty easily last year. Um, this year you fall ten to six down there. Game played at Susquehanna Valley High School. Again, defense played really well. One long passing play that they score a touchdown on and a, and a field goal. That's it, right? Yeah, we uh, <clears throat> defensively they had a good, fairly good opening drive. And then we kind of settled down and made him punt. And I think they either turned it over or punted the entire rest of the game. They had one long third down play where they ran a little uh, trips formation. They did a pump uh, on the slot guy. And the other receiver, you know, took off deep, beat our safety, got a long touchdown. In watching the film, we see a couple mistakes. We didn't get a good jam on the guy. And the safety, for just a split second, Caught, caught a little flat-footed on the pump. You know, outside of that, we pretty much yeah. stuffed them. I mean, uh, Defense, again, played great. Yeah. Offensively, there seemed to be some spark. Uh, moved the ball down the field, but again, a lot of penalties really <laughs> caused the doom for, for some offensive possessions, and uh, one goal line stand by the Stallions really was the difference in the ball game. Um, on a bright note, um, Sultani Campbell, Expected a lot from him this year. Catches his first touchdown pass. Um, gets us on the board, but uh, falls short 10-6. to six. What were your thoughts on the offense this week? Yeah, they they definitely moved the ball the best they've moved it so far in, in the three games. Um, they seem to bog down a little inside the 20s, um, whether it be penalties, yeah. um, you know, a missed pass. We had a couple guys open that were sure touchdowns. We overthrew them. Um, you know, we just we make all those little little mistakes that uh, you know we we had a couple where we actually scored and then they got called back for yeah. penalties and um, it's I keep telling the guys and it's hard to keep selling this but we're that close and uh, a couple missed assignments on the line just small things that you know we worked hard this week we had a good practice we watch film and really try to not necessarily hold guys accountable, but let sure. them see what we're trying to tell them. When we say that this, this, and this happened, when they see it on film, it it comes into, you know, a realization sure. for them that, gee, you know, wow, that is it, what happened, so. All right. Um, unfortunately, the, the bad news looks like we're into, what, quarterback number four now. <laughs> um, Danny Giannone broke his ankle. Um, Ty got hurt. Um, JB saw some yeah. run. So uh, what are we looking at next week at quarterback? Um, well, we had a couple guys uh, give it a shot this week. Um, one guy, uh, <clears throat> he spoke up at the end of the game last week and said he could play quarterback. And um, we're kind of in one of those positions where we got to use what we have. And so we gave him a shot this week. And yeah. um, when offense was upstairs, I had him stay downstairs with the defense. We ran a lot of one-on-one -on -one drills and I was really working him on three seconds. I was blowing the whistle and if he didn't have it out, he was sacked yeah. and he, he was, he was spinning it nice. The other kid, he was um, released by the Syracuse strong. Okay. 
Um, he came to us, and he definitely can throw the football. Um, Does he know the offense? I, I don't think that either of them necessarily know the, <laughs> know the offense particularly well. Um, they, they're both football players, yeah. so they've been around it enough to understand the lingo. Uh, it's just a, like anything, it's a timing thing. they got to get that timing down with the wide receivers, which, uh, you know, unfortunately pro- so far has proved to be gotcha. elusive. <laughs> All right, so who's on the schedule this week? Uh, we have the Upstate Predators. Uh, I watched a little film on them. They... Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty similar to us. Um, they they run a four three. They um, they don't overcommit on defense. They don't blitz a lot. They play it pretty straight up. On offense, I see a lot of uh, two by ones with a running back motion out to give them uh, trips formations. Yep. Um, their quarterback looks fairly mobile. So I have told the guys, you know, we got to really be on point, especially on the backside. Don't get caught. You know, and cheating in, trying to chase because you know he'll he'll spin out and it'll be a big play. So I think if we stay disciplined, okay, I think we'll be all right. That game's on the road this week. Yep, we're we're in Rochester. All right, heading out to Rochester, the Upstate Predators. I do have to say, you know, he's been a beast all season long, but you know, watching the game, Shamar Williams just oh. seems to be everywhere and on every tackle and just flying around like a madman. Yeah, he um. He definitely has no regard for his own well-being. <laughs> he, uh, he he flies around at 100 miles an hour, and you're right. Yeah. He, he's around the football all the time. Yeah. Um, we watched on film. I called a couple of blitzes, and we set it up where he came on touch and just buried the running back one-on-one. Yeah. And, um, and he's very emotional, sometimes to his own detriment. Sure. But... Man, you can't argue his passion for the game. Yeah. You know? All right. Okay. Well, Coach, good luck. Again, I agree with you 100%. This 0-3 team could very easily be 3-0, yeah. and but uh, get another crack at a lot of these guys in the second half of the season. Got to get that first win in hand, however. So hopefully that'll be this week against the Upstate Predators. I hope that uh, we go there this week, we win, and then maybe go hit Nick Tahoe's for a garbage plate. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. All right, Coach. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Hello everyone, this is Rob Bennett and Scott Wilson from the Sports Express Network and we are here today with local legend TJ Gamba, <laughs> now coach of the Cuga Spartans. Welcome coach. Thank you sir. How's it going today? Mr. Scott, how are you doing? Great. Good. Yeah. Doing great, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks Thanks for coming in. So really want to hear about the Cuga Spartans. We'll start out with that and uh, you know, what's going on there? Well, quite a bit actually. It's um, a, a year ago we were just getting the program off the ground. Uh, it was a hectic year of um, uh, basically recruiting, rolling some logistic wrinkles out just to get some things going. Yeah. And uh, from there, it's uh, it's been a little bit of a grind, but on the pleasant side, some good things happened, and we got a lot of great things happening, obviously. It's got to be a pretty neat opportunity. There's a lot of guys that get to coach a lot of different places, but to start a program from scratch, not a lot of guys get that opportunity. No. And, uh, you know, I think they made a fantastic coach with you. We said Auburn native, um, going to Ithaca College, yeah. getting drafted by the Indians, playing some minor league ball, coached all over, coached with Ithaca, um, coached at Auburn High School, did some other things as, as well. But, uh, you know, I know they were ecstatic to get you here, and it looks like that it's working out so far. What, what have you been your thoughts on the season? Um, our season, well, geez. Going into it, uh, we knew we were a little light on the roster as sure. far as numbers for recruitment. It's our first year. Yeah. It's kind of a hard thing to get going. But uh, we, we got the players that we got, and uh, we basically got going on the chalkboard and yep. uh, went back to just the, 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 the primal fundamentals of the game. And that, was, that, that will always be our foundation of our program, no matter how many players and how good a player yeah. or a student athlete that we get here but we just went to the basic fundamentals we started in on ground balls we started in on catching it we throwing it where we have to as far as pitching goes making good contact getting very aggressive on the base pass and and that formula kind of worked into the mentality yeah. part of the game uh, we got some great coaches in in our program and they they we all kind of got together very quickly and, and melded and uh, things went in a really good direction, and the season went in a, in a, as well went in a good direction. We we, we made our mistakes, sure. but we learned from it. But it was a good season overall for well, us. You, ecstatic about you it. You finished the year twenty and sixteen. Yep. Was, was that your expectations going in? Did you have any idea that you'd no. be that successful? No way. <laughs> right. But with that said, um, 
I'm the I'm the type of person, and anybody that knows me, I'm yeah. very competitive. Uh, it's just like on the academic side of things. If you study for the test, uh, you have your expectations of doing well on the test. And once we figured out that we had a kind of a tough group, yeah. kind of bought into the mentality, um, things went in that direction, as I stated just a few minutes ago. And um, with that said, the, the bar always was going as high as they would set it. And yeah. we kept setting it just a touch higher for them to touch. Sure. Uh, that, that height of level of play and, and they did a great job because did a great job their their best attribute was their toughness their yeah. mental toughness and that really came through in a lot of different ways throughout the season well that, that's fantastic year one a lot of local kids a lot of Auburn yep. kids I think a skinny Atlas kid Marcellus yes, sir. ESM I think Sam yeah, yeah, yeah. yes so uh, it's got to be fun when, when you're winning and winning with local kids as well. Sure. But um, has there been a transition mode? You know, talk about the recruiting trail. Like well, now you're going to year two. Year How's two, that different? Um, well, just getting our name out. The year that we had was a, was a, a foothold, I think. People understand um, that we're going to work at this. We're into development here and teaching the game. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, hopefully that carries some of the attributes out into life as well you know that's the goal here we are in the student athletic setting sure of college this is not professional baseball or something beyond not even softball but yeah uh, we were joking earlier about that but um we're 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 fundamentally a teaching program uh, get at those basics and the recruiting year this year got better from the year we had definitely we had more contact yeah uh, we had more, uh, our word was out there, our brand is getting out there, I'm out there a little bit more, sure. churches are out there a little bit more, so we're really trying to recruit the local area, um, we're getting some influx from outside of the area, yeah. I had a recruit in this morning from New York City, Fantastic. Told earlier, so good. that's going really good, and um, I couldn't be happier with the way things are progressing, and lots. I still got a long way to go to roll some wrinkles out. Okay. Basically, we're running into a new, co you know, complex or whole field. Yeah, I, about. I wanted to talk to you that uh, luckiest program in the world getting to play in the brand new Falcon oh, Park. Talk, talk about Falcon Park oh, a little bit. Oh my God, um, I don't know. It's just uh, it's kind of overwhelming to have grown up there and yeah. see it go from the old park, Falcon Park, to the <laughs> new Falcon Park, and then get the turf. Yeah. Added to that, and um, I, I don't know. It's for recruiting. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, when the kids got on it, when it when it finished, it was a beautiful thing. Um, it's playing well, and it's yeah. going to settle in and, and gain speed. It's playing a little bit slow, I think, right now. Okay. It's like my first onset as far as baseball goes, yeah. but that's going to speed up quick. Yeah, we've got to do a little plug for the for the double days right Great now. Job. Everyone in Auburn, if you have not been out to Falcon Park yet to see the double days, you've got to get out there and see that new turf. And, uh, you know, pr yes, pretty sir. neat the relationship between Falcon Park, obviously, you know, the municipality run organization in, in the double days. But I love what they did with Falcon Park and, and Cuga Community College. And uh, so it's you guys are playing there, but uh, also started a lacrosse team, women's lacrosse. Both. And that's fantastic. Soccer will be there. Um, it's, it's a such great partnership. Great for the whole area. Yeah. So now the field is going to have a couple more months of usage. For our community, I yeah. mean, it is a community college setting. I think it's a great deal for everybody involved as far as the school goes, the community. And I'm, you know, I'm sure this, you know, the, the, the high school team has a beautiful place to yep. play now. You know, that there's games in the early spring that would have never made it there this, this spring. Uh, and next spring they're going <laughs> that, that, that's for sure coming from guys who played well i can't even say we played that we're trying to play on on grass fields having some turf fields would, would definitely make everyone's life a lot easier but uh, you guys have that and so did the recruit you had in today did he have a chance to see falcon park yes sir what do you think i mean his parents yeah, came they're in. Great. They, were, they were overwhelmed and wooed you know it's great it's, <laughs> it's i gotta say that's going to be a tough match you know there's some beautiful facilities and college ranks around here and i gotta put that right at the top of the list yeah right you know at the top of the list. these these kids in we're auburn fortunate. we're fortunate these kids blessed. in auburn are unbelievably lucky first they get to play football and lacrosse in holland stadium right. and which i'm telling you there is just no better venue for yeah. high school football or you know the auburn pride play in there it's also beautiful. 
but then for the high school team to play at uh, at Falcon Park, I think no that's question. just going to help out significantly. Um, you know, I'd like to back you up a little bit and uh, talk about your your Auburn high school days, and uh, you know, just kind of the ju- the baseball journey that you've well, been up to, up to this point. You want to go back to my high school? Yeah, days? absolutely. Whoa. I know uh, some some you well, played with some some there. local guys, so, uh, so yeah, let's let's well, hear a little bit about that. I mean, I was. Um, I was blessed, like we were talking about earlier, about the playground era. Um, we had playgrounds when I grew up here, yeah. and I think that you can attribute a lot of Auburn High's baseball success, at least, in all their sports as well, yeah. to the playground eras. Um, when we grew up, we went out and played on the playground. We learned to win, lose, yeah. and whatever else, you know, get in trouble, get out of trouble, <laughs> whatever kind of stuff you do at the yeah. playground. But we were, we were fortunate enough to have that competitive edge um, growing up here and you know our high school teams had an expectation I can remember not even playing varsity baseball but getting ready to my freshman and eighth grade ninth grade years going into I can't wait to play varsity level baseball and my expectation personally was yeah. to compete and, and, and continue a winning tradition sure. which that I think every kid that came through in the next 15 to 18 years after that and beyond even uh, had that expectation and it was almost innate yeah. it was built in and i was fortunate enough to have a lot of great teammates and friends that bought into the same mentality and it's not, it wasn't like we went around and right. talked about it it was like that's how we practiced our coach joe mushock mm-hmm. back then ed gramley yeah. you know back then our jv guy who was later on the varsity coach um that was kind of the way it was and um and it was easy it was an easy transition um it was that was our, our my high school days were awesome yeah. as far as that goes as far as got, sports goes. I had some, a great high school. You were on some sports very sports. very successful teams and uh, yes, sir. were able to parlay that to the Ithaca Bombers. How yeah. did, how did that selection come about? Well, um, that was an interesting selection. I had been fairly heavily recruited, yeah. luckily, um, not knowing about the process a lot. Only talking to other guys a little bit older. Sure. So I mean, I was you know getting interest from a lot of Division One schools, some area schools, Lemoines, and Ithacas, and um, what it basically, in a long story short, boiled down to is my father said that he liked Valiseni. Yeah. He didn't say he liked Ithaca. <laughs> Your dad and a lot of people. He didn't, but... he didn't like LSU, he, he, you know, the school is beautiful, yeah. South Carolina, I mean, um, Coastal Carolina was out of the picture because yeah. who was going to send their kid to Coastal Carolina <laughs> to, yeah. you know, to go up. I would live on a beach and <laughs> go play baseball. Oh, but, man. And um, at the end, that was really, you know, it was a year, year and a half process for yeah. me. And he muttered out those simple words. I like Valisani. And so didn't I. Yeah, and I like the school. And it really, my father didn't say a whole bunch yeah. about my college selection or experience at all mm-hmm. until then. And that kind of dawned on me. And okay. The guy doesn't say that much well. about the whole thing. And then it just resonated to me. Luckily, it didn't. Yeah, and, I, and that was pretty much when I made my decision up. So that's how I got Ithaca College. Yeah, I excelled at Ithaca College. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think what I found out was a 367 career batting average, 17 Something. home runs, 126 RBIs, a bunch of stolen bases. Something like that. Something maybe. like that. Sound maybe. about right? Yeah. Great teammates, great coaches. Yeah. You know, had a great experience there as well. Uh, Hall of Fame coach. Uh, I still talk to him weekly if not a couple times a week and yeah. just retired yeah sure after what, 41 years at Ithaca College yeah I was um, going to beautiful uh, guy I'm going to kind of give up a surprise but I was going to ask you I was just going to throw a couple names by you and get sure. your thoughts but this is a perfect opportunity yeah you know you do a lot of coaching now what what did you learn from George Valcente oh, and uh, you know um, that that program there at Ithaca um, from the baseball aspect of it um, when I played there you just you it was an easy buy-in. Um, fundamentally speaking, base running, the, the game itself, what to look for, what to not. He's prof- he played professionally. Okay. Him and Coach Fazio, um, the hitting part of it. Uh, we had a great group of guys that really wanted to play and had, were intrigued with the mm-hmm. game. But beyond baseball, when I went back to coach, it really dawned on me. Uh, years later, I went back and coached a couple yeah. years with him and Faz and that group down there and I probably learned more the, the second time around <laughs> about how really good he was yeah. at what he did for a living and, and it was it was an unbelievable experience to 
play for him. It changed, it changed my life. Yeah. I've talked to some other guys that have played at Ithaca. Um, we talked about this earlier, Dave Maloney and, mm-hmm. and Steve and you. So yeah. and there just seems to be this, this reverence for, for, for Coach V or Valicente. And, uh, He's the best. Just, yeah. He's one of the best ever. And, uh, you know, just as we're talking here, one of the neat things that, um, that I learned in preparing for this was, uh, um, coach's son ended up coaching at Wells College and yes, uh, did some coaching there and David. did write a couple articles and he made sure to you know thank you for some of uh, what you taught him along wow. with all the other coaches there and I just thought that was a, a great thing but um, yeah, so a successful career at Ithaca and um, then, then you get drafted what was that like? Wow dream come true yeah. you know I've always that was something I think a lot of people that played baseball as a kid and youth and coming up for, you know, through the ranks of high school to college. And um, I had every uh, ambition as a youngster to play professional baseball. And my, my sights were set on that. And I had Coach Val Sonny, you know, Coach Mushak here, all our teammates in Auburn here that, you know, it was kind of that mentality. And I, you know, again, it wasn't nothing that I really ever said out loud that, you know, I'm going to play in the big leagues or have a shot to do so. Because that's a hard thing to do, oh, as, as we know. Doubt. And uh, but when I had um, the opportunity and I was drafted my junior year at Ithaca, yeah. uh, it was uh, it was a dream come true for me, you know. And, yeah. and you don't have a lot of time to sit there and <laughs> think, wow, that's a great thing. Okay. You got minutes basically, yeah. and your your feet are hitting the road. To, in a competition level, really uh, gets gets tall quick. So, so how how that happen? You could just get a call from the Indians saying, "Well, you, drafted? you yeah. the, the draft process is you you know you're involved gotcha. with it. They they IQ test yep. you, they eye test you, they do every kind of interview with you. They're at the house quite a bit. They want to know what your intent is if you're you're going to get you know drafted and yeah. you know their willingness to draft you at a certain round. Right. I guess is if that's what you want to say. Yeah. Uh, they draft by round, so they, they get some information and good, you know. So you know what's happening, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I had Coach Val Senny and people before us in that program went through the same sure. system, so it really didn't impact me. You know, I, w- I was lucky that it didn't have an impact on because you're playing. Yeah, was, you're playing baseball yeah. in college, and they're coming around all the games. They want to talk to you. So sometimes uh, that could have a negative effect mm. on you. But like I had great leadership. Um, my roommate was drafted the same year, Jamie nice. Ken Jemmy from yeah. Syracuse, uh-huh. New York. Yeah. Very, one of I've, met, I've met Jamie. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's my guy. Oh, that's awesome. One of my best friends ever. One of the greatest guys ever. Good, good stuff. So yeah. you're a 21, 22 year old kid, and yep. you're, you're living in Batavia, New York. Yeah. Spent some time in Iowa. Yes, sir. And, uh, North Carolina. In North Carolina. Kinston, North Carolina. What's that like, just being a professional baseball it's player? A, and, uh, it's a little bit of a grind? or unique, yeah. a unique grind. Um, you don't have a lot of time to sightsee unless you're looking out the bus window. Um, you know, if you're not sleeping, you're looking out the bus window or playing cards or something. Sure. But um, you, you get you get wrapped up into the moment if you're paying attention to it, just like anything else. You acclimate to the yeah. scene. Um, you're concentrating on your business. Uh, you're taking. I I had to really take everything in because I wasn't one of those guys blessed with. 6'4", 250-pound yeah. home run hitting guy. I wasn't going to steal, you know, 50 bases in professional baseball in a year or 30. Mm-hmm. And so I had to do all those components that you have to do right to compete. Yeah. You know, many. I have to do many things. Yeah, were you a little bit of a utility man? So yes, sir. Sometimes you played outfield, played yes. some second base, played some third base, just trying to do whatever For it sure. takes. Yeah. yeah, at that point in time, um, I had a, a coach in the set, spring training in the second year. Um, asked about my um, availability to or willingness to make that happen as a as a everyday type of thing. So um, at the end of that second spring training, well, I'd probably have to back up. I was drafted as an outfielder, okay. and I played my first twenty or so games at shortstop for Batavia due to an injury. Gotcha. And that didn't go too bad. <laughs> didn't go great at times, but didn't go bad. Yeah. But that that's where they started thinking about that going into the next spring training. Yeah. Uh, maybe making me into a utility type of guy, and nice. beefed up a little bit, hit the weights, and see if I could have a little bit more power at the plate, in which that kind of worked out a little bit. Yeah. Well, but that's how I kind of made my way through professional baseball. Well, that's great. One other interesting thing that I found about you know doing some research on you is started out at Auburn High School, 
came back and coached at, at Auburn High School. Sure. Played college ball in Ithaca, went back and coached some college ball at Ithaca. Yeah. Played in Batavia, went back and coached in Batavia. Yeah, and that's got to be a pretty unique pretty uh, funny, set it? of events for a guy. Fantastic. Yes, it is, and, and it's, it's been great. Yeah. And then starting a college program here and on your home turf, literally. Yeah. Um, now, so it's it's been it's been awesome. Yeah. It's been an awesome. Scoot, I have been kind of hogging the conversation. No. Anything you want to add? <clears throat> no, I I was taking it all in, and I think it's great. One of the best things I find is to be able to give back to the people that gave to you. Yeah, sure. And you you did that multiple times, and that's uh, it's not only great for you, but it's commendable. You know, it's Thank something you. that. Uh, Anybody that does that should be proud of because you don't forget yeah. where you come from. Thank you. And that's um, one of the driving, motivating reasons. But um, the impact of the Coach Val Senes and you Sharks and Gremlins and all yeah. the coaches that I've run across that have an impact on my life yeah. um, and the reasons uh, and the characteristics and the tools that it gives you to, you know, basically, I didn't make a lot of money playing baseball, sure. but it's given me everything to get what I've what I've. Uh, you know, achieved and gotten in my yeah. in my life, and, and um, you know, I came back to Auburn to you know not complain about the way some things were going from a baseball aspect. I just wanted to put my you know name in the hat and see what happens. And mm-hmm. then you run across you know a pretty good run in, in, at the high school level, and That's you know fantastic. turn some things up a notch for yeah. some guys to go to college to play, and they're all doing great, you yeah. know. And, and there are different aspects of life. I ran across three or four of them this spring when I went out west and to Buffalo, and nice. I'm up in Albany, and they know that I was coming to town. And it was a be- That's the beauty of it, right there. Yeah. That's the really, really. It's a big reward. Well, Coach, we really low risk. Yeah, we really appreciate your your time and coming in here with, with us today. I just, uh, you know, I'd like to get your thoughts on. Uh, I'm going to throw some names out there and just All get right. your thoughts, and we'll just start right right at the top. And Tim Lacastro, well, what do you think about that guy? Awesome, awesome, <laughs> yeah. isn't it unbelievable? Uh, it's just there. fantastic. I shake my head every time I'm watching him. And Seems like I'm very proud time. of him. He's a yeah. great guy. As as you know, I, I when I mention Timmy, I always mention his teammates because that's what he does. Mm-hmm. That that kid's always talking about how to get on base, how to score a run, how to win for the team, yep. what his contribution is to win for the team, and he's always been like that. Yeah. And his teammates of the teams that I co- I coached him for three years at the high school level. Yeah. And he was like that, and his teammates were like that, which is commendable to them and, yeah. and their approach and their buy-in to that that component. And yeah. you know, I think they're living their lives like that. And Timmy LaCastro is um, a tribute to the town, you yeah. know, his family, his schools that he played for. Oh, by the way, Auburn and Ithaca. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, fun, yeah fun, proudly. Fun. Proudly. <laughs> That's great. I huh? wear that. Yeah, Matt Brooks. Awesome, Matt Brooks, Brooksy. Um, just missed him in high school, the year I stepped aside. That would have been his first year okay. at the varsity level uh, in Auburn High. But I uh, had the great pleasure of uh, having him with uh, the Miami Marlins when I coached yeah. with the Marlins at Batavia. And he helped us out this spring and hopefully continues with that. He's now going back to school, and he is a beautiful human being. Um, great player, uh, great approach, very sound very sound human being and that's uh he's a great impact on the kids he's got a lot to offer well, that's fantastic all you coaches Good that man. are out there listening uh, you may want to go out and try to get your hands on matt brooks but um yes sir one last one uh tom napoli tommy napoli Matt. well i go way back with tommy napoli um i grew up on lake ave yep and he did too so we go back to when he had a lot of hair and it was really curly <laughs> so i've never uh, seen have, that have a picture actually to prove it some people might not remember I, I those remember. days but uh you might huh scoop yep so um he he coached with me in uh, auburn, here in auburn yeah. high and um i was that was my first and only phone call when i got the job was to tommy napoli and he he was all in um very loyal yeah. um kids adore him he's a great coach um Probably one of the best game coaches I've ever been around, and and I and I mean at any level, yeah. his um, his awareness of what's happening two three at bats away, what happened you know a couple innings ago, um, photographic memory of the game. Yeah. You know we'd be going over the, you know we'd get home off the bus and we'd be shaking our heads because it would happen so fast and you know we'd be on the phone at ten o'clock at night and he he'd be ripping off every inning every play. 
you know, pitch counts, and which, you know, that's common for a lot of baseball guys who are like that. They'll remember what they get in pitch yeah. counts and in that bat. I still do it. Yeah. You know, funny enough, my wife teases me about it all the time. <laughs> How can you remember that? I said, I can't remember a lot of things, but <laughs> when they get you out, you try not to have uh, failure the next time. Sure. So yeah. that's the competitive nature of it. But Tommy Napoli was, um, he was, he was the, he was, um, the major reason of the success that we had in our high school run here yeah. was mostly because of Tom Napoli. Yeah, I was oh, lucky I enough. Him. I was lucky enough guy. just to sit through a couple of practices. He just gave up his time and came and worked out with kids. And just, you know, I thought I'd heard a lot of baseball, but you know, he yeah. just put things in a very, very clear, distinct way, and yes, you know, it just blew me away with stuff that I'd never even heard of before. I thought, you know. I, I, I thought I knew a lot about baseball, and I realized that uh, it just I'm he's nowhere awesome. near where, where you guys are, are at. He's great. Um, he was great. I can't say enough about Tom Matt. Yeah. He was a great Good impact guy. on our community, for um, sure. I bet you he's donated a couple golf balls to your yard. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's I right. I see, I see Tom over at, at Me and time. the mall find Tom and Napoli balls a lot. <laughs> Big end on it. Nice. nice. Keep a whole bag for him every time. I, I just keep his right in one bag, and he doesn't have to buy golf balls. He can get get his old golf balls back. Right. Well, coach, again, awesome. thank you very much for being here. And, Thanks for uh, having me. you know, if there's anything you want to say to, uh, you know, baseball players in this area about what you've got going on at Cuga community college, yeah. the Cuga Spartans, let her rip. Cuga Spartans. Well, basically, um, like I alluded to earlier, we're trying to recruit the area. Um, we're looking for committed guys that want to not only get a good education, but as I promised them, I hope to give a great effort to make their baseball education. Yeah you know, a positive experience and teach the game. Uh, we'd like to be competitive, but uh, we're looking for buy-in guys. Um, try not to over-recruit and bring in a whole bunch of guys and tell a whole bunch of people that they can't play at the end of it. So we're trying to, you know, and that's one of the first things I ran across on the recruiting trial was guys that had went to other schools and they were looking for a place to land because of places that had large numbers in recruitment. So I'm sensitive to that. And, um, you know, I haven't been through it as a player. Parents have spent money to send their school kids to school, so I'm trying to be sensitive to that. But we're lo we're looking to do some really good things and be competitive, and yet you know, give them a good, you know, academic experience here, save some money, go out to a four-year school, and do really well in life. Mm -hmm. And that's really you know, I got you know a coaching staff surrounded by me. Mark Mark Del Piano yeah. comes all year long when he's home. You know, Matt Brooks is here. John Rizzo. Got a, uh, old timer Larry Wontuck comes over and works with, with the pitchers. Got really good baseball people. Um, we are committed to do well here. Um, we're, we're also, you know, I'm bought into the community. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm born and lived here my entire life. So and I've, I'm very appreciative of the city and the college getting together with Falcon Park to give us the opportunity yeah. as coaches to play down there. And uh, hopefully now it's our turn to step up and make some good things happen down there. Absolutely. Now we're after those kinds of kids that want to come and have that experience here so if you're out there come and get it and it's here it's here to get it so all right that's what we're all about sounds great like coach it. thanks again thanks for having all me all right thank hopefully. you thank Scoot. you appreciate it all thanks